Hello, and welcome back to Therapist Plays Disco Elysium. Okay, I, I couldn't do it last time. So if you saw the last episode, you know that I I just, my my feelings and my morals got in the way and, and I didn't know what to do. In this episode, we're going to try again. We're going to go on a search for a different way, a different way than compromising everything that we've been trying to build up about ourselves and all of the people in Martinez. <laughs> and, and we're going to fail spectacularly in so many ways along the way, but I will make a decision by the end of this episode. I'm kind of curious to see what you all make of how this turned out, so let's jump in. Okay. <laughs> After the disaster of conscience from last episode, I have to find another way to solve the case with um, the missing gun and Everard without compromising our morals. The thing is, is after going around town and talking to like Tommy, who we manipulated emotionally for the case, it brought back up bad memories <laughs> of how it felt to do that. And so I found it very hard to do it with um, Isabel, the washerwoman. How we felt emotionally manipulated by Classia. How we were not able to give in to giving Kuno drugs in order to get him on our side. Like, it's just not our Harry. We've tried it. We tried it with Tommy. We've seen what it feels like through Klasia. It doesn't feel great. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. <laughs> so, so I'm going to distract myself. Remember remember how back in the Klasia episode, I gave a bit of a, a lesson on coping strategy? And how I said that in times of high stress, distraction or avoidance is not like the the most effective strategy for coping. Like when you're at a seven or above, or even a five or above, distraction is not really the skill that you need. Because it, the goal of distress tolerance or coping is like bring yourself from a high level of stress down to a lower level of stress. Not all the way down to zero, maybe, but just down to a low enough level where you have more effective rationale and problem-solving skills. Distraction is great for low-level stressors, like boredom, um, or you're anticipating, you know, uh, a hard conversation or a job interview or something, and you want to distract yourself for a little bit. That's fine. We're in a high level of stress right now. This is important. This is really important. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna we're gonna actively do the wrong thing here um, because it demonstrates this idea very well that uh, avoiding and distracting ourselves from the problem does nothing to solve it, and in fact lets the stress incubate and inflate and get worse the less and less things we have to distract ourselves with until we have to face it. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna demonstrate this now. Uh, I'm gonna go sing some karaoke so that I don't have to think about this problem. And in very extreme cases, I may end up uh, using some sort of harming substance to distract myself fuller, more fully uh, from the problem. But hey, we, we can convince ourselves that we're being productive. I'm not avoiding the problem, I'm being productive. I'm solving cases, I'm I'm helping people, I'm, I'm bringing joy to the world through music. I'm not distracting, I'm not avoiding, I'm being productive. The tape you found from the, a shack on the coast. The, the A side has smallest church and saints songs written on it. And the B side is supposed to contain the instrumental version. Okay, let's check it out. The porter reel is just what you needed. The reels attached to the apparatus with a satisfying click. 
The tape is routed behind the magnetic reader. Let's first play on the tape. We press the large button marked Commencer and the tape starts spinning. There's a small delay before the song starts playing. Let's let's get a let's get a closer listen. It sounds like someone's moving in the room, getting comfortable. Then the organ starts playing a simple, melancholic tune, echoing in the hallway. A lone singing voice joins in, telling you about the tiniest church in Sessons, surrounded by even tinier yard. You almost feel the seaside mist on your skin. It's mega sad. Within seconds you know, this is the one, the real <laughs> shit you've been looking for. The one you trust your room to that Classia told you about. Perform it. Yes! Let's do it. Let's let's dive deep and darkly into our soul. Again, th this this act of avoidance from the practical problem of I can't find my gun and I don't want to manipulate people to get it. We could very easily convince ourselves that um, this is a better use of our time. And maybe it is in some sense. But it's like we're, we're avoiding maybe a stress level four or five by actively doing something that could bring up even worse feelings. Let's do it. A click, then silence for a bit. Then the tape stops spinning. <laughs> Scratch that. I'm already crying and I look dumb and old. <laughs> Harry! That's too real. Could I sing this for karaoke? I think I could sing this. Of course you could sing this. You could take sad to a whole new level with this. And you already know the lyrics since you've listened to it like a million times. Oh, we're so, we're so doing it. And the B-side of the tape contains the instrumental version. It's like the world itself is telling you to do it. Only one obstacle stands on your way. What? God. You have to convince God to let you sing karaoke in the whirling. After you've won him over, you can express yourself. Let the pain out. Make everyone understand. Good thing we gave him that fake bird. The lieutenant watches you pack up the boombox. He doesn't say anything. I guess it wasn't a fake bird. It was a taxidermy bird, but all the same. Guard? Hey, was there something you needed? L look, you are uh, a, a citizen of this world, a public servant, one might say, uh, being the bartender <laughs> or a cafeteria manager. It's your civil duty to let me do this because solving this emotional crime of needing to unburden my soul of this music is going to help me solve the somewhat related crime of getting my gun back, which I think is going to let me solve the real crime of who killed the person in your backyard. Well, well. Bringing him that new bird sure made a difference in his attitude. Yes! I Okay, this is a little bit manipulative <laughs> as well, but look, you got to ask yourself who benefits. Guard benefits from having that bird, and now we benefit. Okay, this is a mutually beneficial thing. Guard, I need to sing karaoke now. No, you don't. It's not happening. Hey, hey! He tries not to look at you. <laughs> it's dangerous to acknowledge the karaoke man. Okay. This is tactical. This is this is real strategy here. It's part of my quest of self-discovery. Help me. That's 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 literally the the kind of pitch I was making to him a moment ago. <laughs> I kind of have to go with that, right? That's This is my way of apologizing for the trouble I've caused. Please let me say I'm sorry. <laughs> Johnny Law is about to tear it up sad style. <laughs> I have to say this. This is the this is what I was just saying to him. It's part of my self-discovery. The Whirling's not a charity or a musical therapy clinic. It's a commercial establishment. You're going to scare away the customers. Guards? The world is my musical therapy clinic. Okay, let's let's appeal to his uh his wealth of sympathy for, for us. 
<laughs> this is my way of apologizing for the trouble I've caused. Please let me say I'm sorry. By causing more trouble, I think we're good. Why do you even have the PA system if no one's going to use it? It's for the... It's for no one. It's a prop. I'm not letting anyone use it after the great karaoke catastrophe of 44. Hmm. What happened in 44? A lot of people got killed because some arsehole wanted to sing karaoke. Um. A lot of people got killed. Wow. So you think that's going to happen again? Maybe in some ways you feel responsible for that. And you fear that if you were to let us sing karaoke again, that something similar would happen and you would feel similarly uh, responsible. Or maybe you're afraid that we actually could sing the karaoke song and nothing bad would happen. And, and this would make the mistake made in 44 all the worse because then you would know that it was even more your own responsibility. Maybe it was your poor judgment that it was about the specific person that you let sing, not that you let just anyone sing. The more vague, the more general, the less blame you can assume. But if you were to let me do it, <laughs> if you were to let me do it, then you would have to take all the blame. Okay, I, look, we're being manipulative now. Let's stop this. Let's stop this before we go too far. Guards? <laughs> Let's 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 just ask him. It's not a prop. It's for your clients. I know it's used. Okay, yes. It's for some clients. <laughs> I'm a real client. I've paid my bills and I have the right to use the karaoke machine. Ha! Well, we don't have any tapes. They all got stolen. It's all right. I have my own song with me. The man in the vest and the violet shirt stares at the tape you've just given him. He begins to frown. Hard. Yes! This is the look of a man who's defeated. He knows he's out of excuses. That's right! Okay, this time we're using our powers of emotional persuasion for good. For the good of this cafeteria. For the good of all of Martinez, and most especially the good of our soul. Fine, fine. Climb on that stage and do your thing. Just get out of my hair. I'll plug it in for you. Damn this karaoke machine. I promise no one will- Oh, actually, I can't promise. I hope no one dies because of this. Oh, yeah. Time to do the damage. Okay. I'm ready for this. Kim! Back me up as my backup singer. This feels right. <laughs> you belong here. Yes! The stage is all set up for your performance feels silent. You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. You feel a little dizzy, a little unsteady suddenly. Feeling woozy. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? <laughs> Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. Oh, uh, this is great. This is great. There's no way we're going to pass that, and I think that's the whole point. This is amazing. Drama lets us lie, and it would be a total lie to think that we can sing, so it's impossible. And this is one of those red checks where the better outcome is probably that we fail. Let's let's take a look around the, the room. There are some people out there, but mostly a post-meridian slumber has fallen on the premise. Not super lively. It would be wiser to perform in the evening, no? Ooh. But the choice is yours. I guess that's true. Yes. You could always do it in the evening. It will be less scary with a lot of people. Maybe I should do it in the evening. I wonder if it dramatically changes the... like, encounter. Maybe I can avoid this and distract myself with something else. Um, I don't know. Is it better to do it in the evening or... I mean, who am I performing for right now? These two goons? Uh, our... Our long-lost lover here and the money guy. I mean... 
He might enjoy it. It's all about money, you know. I know. <sighs> what is the evening? What what does that count as? When does the evening start? Okay. Um let's check out this window. I, I'm really distracting myself now. I'm not coping well with anything. Behind the dock workers, a ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. Let's give it a squint. There's a little slide panel up there to let some air in. No need to open it in spring. It's still too cold outside. Okay. <laughs> Even with a perception of one, we have a 97% chance. That's amazing. We found the note in the workshop. We've seen the mysterious door. We've been here for a long time. <laughs> really, we've been here for ages. Let's look out the window. There's a yellow ribbon tied to one of the branches. Light yellow, faded with time. A tiny speck of color in the blackness of the thicket, hanging from it, a bronze key. Mm. It's close enough to the latch up there. One can slide it open and just take it. Surely not a coincidence. Someone's hit a key in the bush. Huh? Can you let me slide by so I can grab the thing? I don't know about that. I'm comfortable here. Don't think any sliding would really help right now. Sorry, fucko. <laughs> Looks like you're gonna have to go bush diving. Good fucking luck with that. The Hawthorne's got a bitch of a bite. I'm gonna enjoy the sight of you in the bushes out there. With a loud thud, the old man stands up. Yes! Pushes the window open, grabs the key from the Hawthorne branch, and slides it across the table to you. Thank you, Theo. The key You're a real is one. Brass. Workshop spare is etched into its bow. The old man closes the window and sits back down in silence. That's right. Come on, man. We were just having some fun. Where's the harm in? I'm tired of listening to your shit. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Theo is a fucking real one. Um. Thank you. Don't thank me. I don't give two shits about your key. Oh. <laughs> there is a silence around this man's words. Unlike Titus, they're afraid of him. That's the type of respect he commands. I respect it. Does anyone know why this key was hanging right outside the Unum box window? Didn't even know it was there. Boys. No idea. Never even seen it. Someone must have hidden it there before this room became our place. Maybe this is how Ruby got to the roof that night. Wild theory, cop man. The worst thing is, I like it. She's been in this box plenty of times. Mm. This would give her access to the workshop route. Boss, I don't want to make excuses for her, but... Go ahead, Glenn. Why did she put it back after she took it? Look at Glenny and his girlfriend. It's a solid point, Jinx. There's a lot of things off about pinning this on Ruby. Be careful when you find her, cop. Be fair. Give her a chance to defend herself. That's going to be a tough conversation. It's said without aggression, in good trust. I, I cannot believe the fucking alliance we have developed with the Hardy Boys. <laughs> a, a, a weird sort of alliance. I wonder what door is it open? It's for the blue door in the kitchen. There was oh. a note there that you missed. It said the workshop key is behind the window. It's this key. Oh, okay. So we've already been back here because we passed an 8% check. You see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. The key fits the dimple lock. It takes a bit of effort to turn it after all these years. But then, the lock clicks. Okay. Well, we're back in here. Franco Manchurian. Is there anything? I know we didn't pass this check before, but is there anything else we can do with it? 
The machine is dead and silent. It needs serious. Damn it. Okay. All these mesmerizing machines just waiting to be plugged back in and played. Run your fingers across the dust of the white Diora machine. Feels like it might jump back to life any moment. The lights illuminating the white robed woman. What's white Diora? Some kind of inane pinball theme. Probably related to Messina during the DeLorean age. The history themes are the worst. The lieutenant grimaces looking at the machines. Wasn't there some hint or suggestion that Kim plays pinball? Sounds like you don't enjoy pinball, Kim. Let's go with a bit of reverse psychology. No, I love it. I love pinball. Who doesn't love pinball? Let's move on. There's more honesty in your sarcasm than you think, Kim. How about we fire up one of these bad boys and play some ball? You can't fire them up. They're broken. Only that one machine in the main hall works. The Royalist Pinball. And how do you know that? What a dumb name. Royalist Pinball. If they weren't broken, he would kick one of these machines about now. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, we can't get out of this to put some <laughs> encyclopedia clothes on. Damn it. What about that other one? No. <laughs> God, come on, Kim. 28%? One, uh, one in encyclopedia? I guess we got to roll the dice, because uh, if we finish the thought, we can't come back to it, I don't think. I don't know. You'd think after a thousand hours of playing this game, I'd understand the mechanics. <laughs> Let's roll on that 28 percenter. It's strange that he doesn't like Pimble. Kim here is a Seolite. Damn it! His people are incredibly dexterous, and they all love Pinball. Matter of fact. Hey, didn't you guys, like, invent pinball? Us? Guys? Stop. Yeah, this is this is walking back down some of that territory that we uh, stumbled into before. I'm going to stop. <laughs> okay. I don't like pinball because I had to learn to play it for an undercover job at a pinball ring. And it's a lame, boring, and unchallenging game. There. We can move on now. I don't believe you. I think... I think you're a pinball master. Just like you don't enjoy the phasmids or the kids, I think you love this stuff. Super. Tip top. This went pretty well, all things considered. Damn it. I wish we could uh, do something more with this. Okay, well, we are literally just distracting ourselves because we are failing to do our job properly. You clearly see footprints in the downy carpet of dust covering the workshop floor. This is like when you have something to do and you'll do anything else that's still productive. Like, oh, I have, uh, I have this assignment to do. I got to clean my house. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, now's the time I'm gonna get back into running. I'm gonna go for a run. I'm gonna suddenly start calling people that I haven't spoken to in years. I mean, really, I, I, I should make the time for them. I'll, st I'll start some old projects that I haven't finished. That'll be productive. I'll do anything. I'll do anything to not do the thing that I have to do, but that I can't do. Jackpot. These, and like everything else here, are new. Shit. Let's have a closer look then. We've Large already done prints, this. Most likely made by boots. The size is hard to determine. Soul could be bigger than vamp. The soles have left a pattern, uniform, horizontal lines. This doesn't look like the worker's boots from the hanging, does it? No. These little horizontal lines are different. They look custom made to me. Or some kind of foreign print. Hard to say. Still a boot. Though. Doesn't look like the odd sold print we found at the hanging. The size looks about the same, actually. They're not the same shoe, but they could be the same person. Okay. 
So we still don't know if it's Ruby or not. Everything around you is quiet. The prints crisscross the workshop floor. All right. Well, we're not. I guess we're not doing karaoke until the evening. And we have not made any progress on our gun-related quest. I don't know who else to ask about it. Oh boy, Dude, let's let's talk to this guy. Give me something. <laughs> Give me anything. <laughs> the man ponders his cooking utensils and gives you a little nod, acknowledging your presence. Leo said you're friends with Manana, is that true? The mention of Manana gets his attention. He smiles and delivers a whole slew of unfamiliar words and lively gestures. Then he falls silent again. They're friends. Um, what's behind the blue door? He looks up at you, then looks away quickly, shrugging and muttering something to himself. Shrugging is an international sign for, no, I don't know what's behind that door. Okay. Uh, let's ask him about the borscht. The man says a couple of sentences in that strange language of his, and then seems to wait for you. I'm pretty sure he asked you a question. Guess we'll nod. Mm. Borscht need more vodka? Oh. Okay, so it's vodka that keeps the men happy and in good spirits. Clever move by the Union. Of course, vodka. Now that makes a very, very special borscht indeed. Turn it up and then ask for some yourself. Turning it up seems like a dangerous idea. Honestly, the place is a powder keg. Yes, turn the vodka up. No, no, the vodka cut out. Um, this is some sort of quest that we have, isn't it? The special Porsche. I, I don't think that this is going to lead to anything, <laughs> any sort of profound character moment. So I, I don't really want to eat vodka Porsche. I'll leave the cooking to you. The cook gives you a long, inspecting look. Then... Okay. That one's not important for me. Uh... I mean, the smoker on the balcony is there. We could talk to him. I feel like that's something we should do without Kim. Without his... Suspecting... <laughs> eyes. I don't know what else to do now. Fuck! Okay. Let's think about this. I've, I've sufficiently lowered my... Well, actually, I might have increased my stress by not actually finding a sufficient distraction at all. What do we need to do here? Let's think about this. I can't emotionally manipulate Isabel to sign. I can't do it. I'll destroy her soul like I destroyed Tommy's. Is it in my conscious conscience to forge just her signature? I mean, I don't like that idea either, but I keep coming back to like, look, Everard is going to find a way to do this anyways. And maybe we can take advantage of something while we have the chance. If we're at least somewhat in his good graces, we may be able to counter whatever moves. We'd be at least more informed about them. Uh, but is that just an excuse to get what I want? I don't know. I don't know. Do I even need a gun? Do I even need my gun? I have this sword. <laughs> Fuck, man. I am so conflicted. I'm still conflicted. There's got to be another way. What is this? Um, 
We're running out of things to distract ourselves with. There's things that we are going to do. We're going to do the whole church quest, but I somehow don't find that to be too related to this. Well, maybe it is. I don't know. Everything is somehow connected. Come on, Harry. You're a detective. Think about this. Look, we know who benefits if Everard gets what he wants. Everard benefits. And there's maybe a world where the the kids, Lillian and Isabel, also benefit. Ah, I don't like this. <laughs> I hate having to make this decision. Um, I don't know. Does Lillian have any advice for me about Isabel? The waves are beginning to die down. Look at those little bastards. Simmer down. Uh, I'm, I'm being so avoided. <laughs> I'm being so avoided because I don't want to have to make a hard decision. Let's take another look at this. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to 40 month construction period. Okay, there is actually... Yeah, let's do, let's do that logic check. got our logic up um let's put anything logistical on it that we can oh i i really should have memorized this shit by now plus four logic let's go i think this already yeah that gives us two logic okay i think that's it Yes! Please, please give me a way out. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. Try to find a loophole in the deal. Construction. There is no loophole. The simple truth is the current residents are going to lose their street access and for the next 12 to 40 months, their lives will be dominated by constant construction noise right next door. Why did you trick me? Why did you tell why did you tell me that there's a loophole logic? There there is no loophole. What do you mean? What do you what do you mean? What are the ramifications of this? Once the construction starts, it will probably take a few months, a year maybe, for even the most stubborn occupants to get tired of living like this. After that, they'll sell their property for cheap and move out. Look, Kim, these people are going to have to move away because of the noise. The noise will be tough on the villagers, but I guess that's just the cost of progress. <sighs> why, why does the music have to make it so much harder? <laughs> um, let's get Kim involved. <laughs> of course, I should have seen it. Eva probably has eyes on us, but if the second signature were to be somehow wrong? He won't say it outright, but he's suggesting forgery. You're suggesting... Forgery, yes. It would render the document invalid. Oh, wait. There is a loophole! There is a loophole! If we forge the document, Everard won't know the difference. But maybe, maybe it won't, like, uh, I mean, it won't be valid. Maybe, maybe it can be challenged in, I don't know, is there a court or something? This is it. This, this has to be it. This is all we can do. Okay, let's do it. It's not the sort of act I would normally encourage, but under the circumstances, if done discreetly, it may be the only way to save what's left of the village. You probably don't have a pen. Here, you can keep this. I have another one. Or you could try to trick Everard. Get someone random to sign the document. By the time the union boss finds out, your business here will already be concluded. I'm actually okay with forging it now. I wasn't before because I felt like that was 
extremely dishonest to Isabel. It's it's not a perfect solution, obviously. I think we have to go in here to do it because otherwise people are watching. It's not a perfect solution, but I'm not really signing for her as in like I'm not I'm not signing away her endorsement. I'm just I'm tricking Everard. And and uh, you know, having Kim's perspective on this really does help because like let's get into the role play here. Harry Harry has a hard time judging his own morals. We struggled with Tommy. We 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 ended up burning him and we feel really bad about it. Uh and and it was hard for us to parse what am I prioritizing here? The case or people? Because solving the case is for the people, but if we have to harm people in the in the path, what are we doing it for? And I think that as we work on our identity reconstruction, it's very hard for us to trust our own moral judgment without some kind of comparison. There's only a few cases where we have felt like very confident in what we're saying, and that's like when we talk to Lena. Um, it's like when we talk to a cell, when there isn't like a um, objectively hard decision to make. It's more like it, it was a very psychological platform of like, look, this is a person who is is down on themselves, and and can we help them reframe their narrative and and help them lift uh, themselves out of that. Those are places we feel very confident in, because this is places that I feel confident in, um, therapeutically. This stuff is hard, though, especially for Harry, because I think that um, th the complexity of the world and the case and all of this stuff is like quite overwhelming for him, and he's not sure what kind of cop he wants to be. But we are more and more sure what kind of person we want to be, and that is a very naturally and intuitive thing it's not as tangible, I think. Th this has been a hard thing to parse, like what's what's the right thing to do because we don't know what the outcome would be. We know what the outcome would be if Lena felt better about herself or if Acel, um felt like there were still dreams to chase, right? So So we felt confident there, but this one's hard. Take the legal documents out of the envelope. Interfacing. Okay, let's see. What do we got? Yeah, so it's not so much that like, oh, we have Kim's endorsement to do it, but it's like Kim is someone whose moral judgment we trust. He's not been impaired by, you know, his own addiction. Um, maybe aside from his one cigarette a day. He's not been impaired by a lapse in memory. He's not as easily influenced by other people. He's not as impressionable. He's not all of these things that we're having a hard time trusting ourselves with. So so to see him say, like, look, this is this is worth doing because it'll help us move the case forward and the document's not valid anyways. So it won't destroy their lives. Maybe we can get away with it. And, and and in that sense, I don't feel as bad about the forgery. Okay, I think that's all we have for interfacing. Shit, I mean, do we need to get... Well, we're close to another level if we really... ...need it. Let's see. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. Shit, this cannot be retried. Okay, we have to level up first. I'm not doing this on a 50%. That's not enough for me. Okay, we have to do something else to get some experience first. Let's click some orbs. So, coming back to my original point, like, th this is like a skill check. Like, uh, 
It's not said here, but imagine. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to Those little plus and minuses that are on skill checks, like for me in my own brain, this is why Disco Elysium is so great. In my own brain, I have like plus five to uh, confidence and minus three to anxiety because like the little tagline would be like, uh, Kim said it's okay. <laughs> because this has like brought my anxiety down from like a seven to a four about this. And now I feel like I can more rationally challenge, okay, this is not as bad as I thought maybe to forge the document. Uh, because we feel a little more confident that it's not gonna, it's not going to guarantee that people's lives are destroyed as it felt like it would before. Okay. There's got to be some things that we can do to um, increase our level. We haven't talked to these people yet. We'll come back to them. I mean, how close are we? We're not that far. It's probably just like one thing we have to do to get... some experience. Um, maybe maybe we go back and do the thing with the borscht. I don't really care about that side quest that much, but I don't know. Maybe it'll give us some experience. It doesn't mean we have to actually eat the borscht. I just need some experience. Come on, come on, we can do this. The man ponders his cooking eat. The man's are pretty sure he asked you. Mm. Okay, so it's- Of course, turning it up seems like- Turn it up. He smiles, nodding vigorously, then pours half a bottle of vodka into the pot. With a whistle, he stirs the brew. Um, maybe we can ask for some. Doesn't mean we have to eat it. He smiles and nods enthusiastically and chattering away in his language, ladles some brew into a small thermal cup, then hands it to you. <laughs> I don't think I need anything else. Stay masculine. Okay. Okay, so we have this now. Which is a huge trigger for Harry because now we're like, we're trying to stay off alcohol, but we have Commodore Red, we have Speed, <laughs> cigarettes, and and uh, this, and don't we have like that bottle of spirits as well somewhere? Yeah, we have a lot of alcohol on our person. Okay, are we any closer? Oh, we're so close. This has got to be it. We got to just do like one more conversation maybe. Or click some orbs. <laughs> we're so close. Um, maybe we can find that cockatoo book or something. There's a couple of things like left over that we haven't done. Shelves filled to the brim with crime novels featuring the supposedly okay, stalwart, let's go with this. Who's Dick Mullen? Detective. Dick, your attempt to grasp at the answer. Fails. Oh, come on! It seems very close by, pulsating just out of reach. Come on! 83%. This is why I can't go and do the check unless our thing is higher. It's, it's not, I can't do it. Not at a 50%. Do I have anything reactions? Will this open up the check? People are going to get mad at me for saying this because I should know the mechanics by now. But to, to put in clothes on reset checks, or does it have to be a level? Shelves filled to the brim with crime novels. Yeah, no, the putting clothes on doesn't do shit. It must just be um, putting a skill point in. Oh, uh, an orb. No, where was the orb? Where'd it go? Okay. Shelves full of biographies of famous people. 
Browsing through all the books with all their names makes your head spin. Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches your eye. It reads, High Speed Love chronicles the romance between two of the finest next to Irv's life story. You see a slim next I'm, to that. I, I'm really just here for... I must insist you buy one of the books. Reading them is not... She understands she has erred against the customer and immediately crits. I'm sorry, I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead. Take your time. Time is commerce. I'm just here for the experience, okay? I'll come back to this, maybe. I would say... The greatest innocence. Yes, most certainly. It's an important educational tool delving into the depths of history, religion, and their relation to innocentic power. Okay, who or what is an innocence? A very influential historical figure. But surely I don't have to tell you that. You're a law officer, and law officers have at least some education. The book is also You'd very daring. The author aims to re-examine the universal understandings of the innocentic system, creating a fresh vantage point and a shift in the tired order of things. Uh, so you recommend it? Certainly. It's prudent for a person to have at least an elementary understanding of history and society. Imagine the chaos we'd be in otherwise. You feel like you should get this one. Definitely. It's important somehow. There's something personal inside. Okay, why not? Let's spend all our money on it. A true cultural touchstone. Enjoy the read. <laughs> I don't know. I'm desperate here. This dusty tome brings knowledge on the history of innocences. It's written by one João Paulo Salomão López de Fuego, a mesk fascist who tries to reach a conclusion on which of the innocences is the coolest in the world. Okay, I guess we can take a look inside. The Greatest Innocence by Joao Paulo Salomão Lopez de Fuego. The book is large and heavy. Crack it open. Browsing through the various chapters, you try your best to understand the ceaseless overflow, the sprawl of names, dates, places, events historical. Most of it ends up as a twisted mass of facts inside your brain. You can do it. It'll be worth it. There's something here. Your educational survey is done. Did you catch any of that? No. Oh well. It's pop quiz time. Let's see what you've learned. This might take a few minutes. You should ready? We, should we have like something in an encyclopedia? Fuck it. Why not? That's the spirit. Here we go. I have no idea. Question one. <laughs> Who was the first innocence? Dolores Day. Oh. Okay. Dolores Day? Incorrect. Dolores Day was the innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state. What? She codified parliamentary democracy. Why, Why are my skills lying to me again? Among these, the moral intern, she was powerful and beautiful on all her icons. God damn it! Pain her threshold. Her are silver, white, and apricot. And when you think her name, Dolores... <laughs> Stomach acid rises to the back of your throat, and it hurts. You see a flash silver, a wreath, an airport bag, and blonde hair. You don't know why. Another choice, perhaps? Okay. Stay clear of this one. There's something terrible about this one. Um... What? I'm curious. A strange sensation of loss. When she left the Earth, the dust and the ice and the humans that is unimportant to the quiz stop thinking about this yes the quiz is impersonal no need to rouse sensations in yourself at the mention of Dolores Day who was the first innocence it wasn't Dolores Day uh Sola incorrect Fuck. Sola was anointed during the previous <laughs> and even lived to see the current one. Uh, come on, Harry. Get it together. Who spoke her mind and largely left history to its own devices, encouraging people to excel on their own rather than prescribing to a deified model of history. She is often called an anti-innocence. Sola resigned after an assassination attempt by a Yugo nationalist who blamed her for not taking the side of the left during the turn of the century <laughs> wait, wait, revolutions. Wait, 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 wait. Innocences don't usually resign. 
care to try again? When I first clicked on this bookshelf, is all the shit that I skipped through the information that I'm being asked right now? Did I literally just actually <laughs> skim through the information and and now I'm failing to do the quiz exactly like Harry, the, the real Harry in this game would totally do? I can't even remember because I was just skipping through it. I didn't care. <laughs> I swear to God, if that's what just happened, I'm going to fucking lose it. Uh, this one? Correct. Great. Is no Great. Him, it's not even clear that he was a he, but Franco Negro presumed as such and called him. <laughs> He's depicted as a young man with molten gold pouring out of his mouth. All he spoke was gold. It's said he invented God and equality of men before God. He also introduced the gold standard as a way for measuring people's love for Aurum. As the first innocence, he declared that there should be more of those like him. It is presumed his disciples were the beginning of the holy party, the founding party. Okay. Question two. Who was the strongest innocence? Uh, I, I haven't been paying attention this. now. Is that right? She was powerful and beautiful. It has to be her. A pain threshold. I mean, it wouldn't lie twice, would it? Incorrect again. While she originated many modern Come institutions, on. launched several successful expeditions, and was even critical of the innocentic <laughs> system itself, and somehow keeps popping up in your mind, she is not often considered uh, the strongest. Uh, what? Uh, this is exposing our true idiocy. Even though the words most associated with her rule are <laughs> l'amour, la compassion, la autodiscipline, love, compassion, self-control, which could be seen as facets of strength. Would you like to try again? It's interesting. I think pain threshold. This is just what's on our mind. If it's not accurate. Please. Relax. Uh, I'm try I'm trying to relax here. Uh Vesper? Incorrect. I I cannot the believe Vesper Messina <laughs> This is, is unbelievable. Not a person, this is a, this could not be going worse. On the southeastern coast of the Occident. It used to take up most of the peninsula before separating into <laughs> the republics of Vesper and Messina. Get to try again. Okay. Correct. But well, great. The innocence of militarism. He codified Please don't rule, give me this has got to be the last one. At the same time, and it served them and established the Inter Isolari Real as the global reserve currency. He also established the concept of the nation. Franco Negro attempted to solve the rising tensions between the aristocracy and bourgeoisie by building a unified society in which every man has a place and a mission. But at the same time, may rise to nobility, provided on the strength of his virtue. Okay. Question three. No, no, I hate innocence? this. Please stop. Okay, it wasn't Dolores Day. She's not false. It's been wrong every single time. Didn't it say something about she's the anti-innocence? She is often called the anti-innocence. Okay, it has to be her. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm going to... Dolores? No, stop thinking it. I said it wasn't her. She was true. Uh, Stefan the Despicable? He's got to be the false innocence if his name is Despicable. Incorrect. Stepan the Despicable, <laughs> regent of Kedra was a ruler who conquered the known world during the Kedriatic conquest instead of the despotic Erno Pasternak. No wonder this again? is killing our morale because this is the most embarrassing <laughs> display of our intelligence. Kedra? Incorrect. Kedra How is, is, is it possible that I have picked every single one wrong? Of Mwindi, Isola, <laughs> north of the Occident, between the Ilmaran mountain range and the Pacific Mare Interregnum. Care to try again? I don't care to try again. I want to stop. Correct. There have been a number of counter or false innocences. Some assumed to have innocent qualities. Some 
who just thought so themselves. Occasionally, they have the support of a faction inside the ecclesiastic organization, and accusations of foul play have arisen. Okay. The most famous and important of these was Erenau Pasternak. He was into torture, despotism, hymns, canons, and world conquest, but got defeated and humiliated by Stepan the Despicable. I know what humiliation Ketchum. is like. Final stretch. No. You've come so far no. and learned so much. This is the most important one. Question four. Who was the greatest innocence? The most important of them all. The most precious to humankind. Dolores Day? Correct. Yes! The Mets might see Franco Negro as the father of nations, but... Finally! Century, there's been a great shift in attitude. Dolores Day has become widely regarded as the greatest innocence. A most radical change to the whole fabric of the world. Everything from inter isolary travel to the connected world to three consecutive scientific revolutions can be traced back to her. Every decade that passes, she seems less human somehow, and more beautiful, and more beautiful, and more beautiful. Congratulations on finishing the test. The results and your oh subsequent God, grade this is be have horrific. been calculated. You get what? an F yeah. for failure. <laughs> <laughs> so mean. So fucking mean. You would have done better if you just left Dolores Day for the end. Dial the Dolores Day down a bit. Oh, fuck off, Inland Empire. I hate that you were right. Damn you, arrogant book. What's going on with you? <laughs> this book thinks it's so smart, goddamn. Yeah, that's how we're feeling. Okay. You are shouting at an inanimate <laughs> object like a real weirdo. No um, wonder you seem to have trouble with the right answers. I'm putting this book away. And we got nothing for it. I have to see. Did it start telling me those things before I skipped through them? Shelves full of biographies of browsing through all the books with all their names. Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches your eye. High Speed Love Chronicles Next to Irv's Life Story. You, next to that, River Sholian. I really must insist. Okay. She understands she is. I'm sorry. At least it wasn't that. I was worried that it had given me all the answers up front and that I just like skip through all of them I, I came in here for something this else bookstore is not strictly about crime Rome. Hum, sir please no browsing in that shelf that i can't have you end up like opening a police store next door and stealing my customers oh no amidst the various books you find one written by someone named matthias w dundas these three things are very important to the point of the book and many others on this shelf is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to uh -huh. paid health services. Various paranatural books. There's, I just, I literally just need, oh, there's one book. A sulfur-crested cockatoo sits on the cover, its beak slightly open. Shit, I just spent- It looks as if the bird is calling out the book title. From A to Zurich, a guide to a well-behaved cockatoo. I spent all my money on a book that just laughed at me. And now I don't have enough money for the fucking bird book. I, I cannot, this is a complete failure. We deserved an F. So this perfectly demonstrates what I'm talking about. The more stress we get, the more irrational we're gonna get. The more desperate we are to relieve this stress, we've been desperate to get, st and like we're so close to another skill point, and that desperation leads to a lot of uh, justification and and moral compromising. We we spent money we didn't have on something we didn't need, and now we feel insulted and stupid, and and it makes total sense that we would now try to do something that we really shouldn't be doing. And that in a sound mind at like a lower stress category, we totally wouldn't do this, but we're gonna do it anyways. And and we've we've rationalized that we failed at every possible thing we can in this store. There's there's no way, there's no way this is gonna be a failure too. This is gonna be the one that we succeed at. We've earned this success 
we deserve the success because of all the failures. Let's let's just let's just take it. You wait for the storekeeper to be distracted. When she's not looking, you haul the tome of cockatoos into your pocket. It's quite a challenge, but eventually the guide to the cockatoos is yours. Splendid. Effort. Take that. Take that. Books. We did it. We fucking did it. Now, let's go outside and read it so that we're not reading a stolen book. We'll come back to this. Oh, wait. There was a there was an orb I can click in there. I swear to God, if this puts us over and I didn't need to do any of this. Okay. <laughs> This is this is a disaster. This whole episode is a disaster. Let's read about the cockatoos. A book about different cockatoo species and their behavioral problems. Perhaps it could also offer some insight into your own often problematic actions. The spectacular major majestic cockatoo eyes you from the cover. A cockatoo is a parrot with an erectile crest found on the Seminine Islands and in southern Fas a la Mer. Known for their intelligence and general precociousness, cockatoos are popular birds in aviculture. However, they often exhibit various behavioral issues. Okay, what more? This book talks about the delicate nature of twos, as well as introducing some of the most popular species among the bird enthusiasts. The funeral cockatoo, the major majestic cockatoo, and the most common bang bang cockatoo. It's colorfully illustrated. All right, what problems do these birds have? Where to even begin? All cockatoos are known for their needy natures, requiring attention for at least two full hours a day. They love to talk and have been described as lovable clowns who just don't know how to wrap up. I could handle that. It would be nice to have someone to talk to when feeling lonely. Pet owners also report moodiness, loudness, and hostility as recurring issues. If left unsatisfied, Cockatoos may scream non-stop, pluck their feathers, or become aggressive. Okay, that's pretty bad. Anything else? It is not recommended to get a cockatoo if you're not able to cook them food every day and give them the full care that they need. These birds will never understand that you have a life of your own. Wow, that's a lot of, uh, that's, that's quite demanding. Uh, there has to be something great about cockatoos as well. You're right. Cockatoos are magnificent creatures. They love to perform cuddle and show off and will even scream for fun often as loud as up to 135 decibels okay not great for the neighbors let's read about the funeral cockatoo this is a yellow-tailed black cockatoo its specific name sitarchus venereus relates to its dark and somber plumage this bird looks as if dressed for a funeral 24 7. there is something indisputably ominous about it Ooh. That is cool. Read about the major majestic cockatoo. Perhaps the most impressive of all the species, the endangered major majestic cockatoo is often described as the most flamboyant bird in the jungle. Its pink colored wings and flowing crest embellishing its proud and bumptious nature. In the words of poet explorer Sir James Fournier, few birds more enliven the monotonous hues of the verdant forest than this big, bold and beautiful species. Okay, I like it. Let's read about the most common bang bang cockatoo. Despite its banging name, the bang bang cockatoo is actually the shyest of the species, common in almost all Seminese forests, as well as zoos and homes all over the world. Its plumage is mainly gray and white. The Seminese name bang bang is thought to be of onomatopoeic origins. Okay, this one sounds a little bit like me. Yes. But all those cockatoo species are so different. Which one are you? What if I am just a fuck up a two? <laughs> a fuck up and a cockatoo. <laughs> that that's the most relevant one after how much of a failure the last twenty minutes have been for us. Okay, so the funeral one is a bit morose and grim. The majestic one is more flamboyant, and the bang bang is um, shy. Only the funeral cockatoo and its darkness can truly grasp the depths of my doom-laden soul. 
What if I'm just a fuck up too? I had to go with this. You're right. You're a fuck too embodied. This sorry ass bird belongs on your heraldry. It probably doesn't even have feathers and only screams. <laughs> we got our skill point. That's all that matters here. What a fucking disaster. Okay. Let's try this. Well, let's see. It's interfacing. It's an interfacing check. Let's see if this you puts take us... the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to 40 month construction period. And... 58%. Just want to make sure there's not anything we're missing here that can give us interfacing. Please. Anything. This is, this is important. No. No. Other yellow things, but not interfacing. God damn it. Okay. We're, we're throwing a point in. Okay. Let's do it. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to 40 month construction period. One last thing. One last thing. Is there anything that is giving us negative interfacing from here? I don't think so. All right. Does anything give us interfacing from here? Because this gave us um, something. Damn it. All right. I, there's no more avoiding this. Let's just do it. You take the legal documents out of the Commence the forgery. A 12 to 4 with a confident flourish, you complete your forgery. What do you see on the signature line? The name Isabel Sadie. Indeed. To be honest, it does look very convincing. The calligraphy is close to superb. It might as well be her actual signature. But it's not. And the document will be nullified if she disputes it. Yes. That means Everard will have to start over. Yes! We fucking found a way! All you need to do now is mail the signatures to Everard's accountant in La Delta. Oh my god, I... I feel so much relief right now. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I'm so glad we went through this, even if it's meant so much personal <laughs> embarrassment for Harry. So much bumbling around, I... I just wasn't going to sleep well having done that to Isabel, having having made her do it herself. You take the legal doc. Okay. Okay. We did it. And and this is a point in our character's storyline where where we've now developed a new schema. Okay. Come back to the idea of schemas, blueprints. We can now make an association between, like, sometimes it's okay to give up uh, certain things in the pursuit of a greater good. But it would have developed a very maladaptive schema to tell us the only way to solve this bigger problem of the gun and Everard is to compromise our morals. And and it could have given us a very cynical outlook on what what virtues are worth trading and, and that people's emotions are free to manipulate in the pursuit of something greater good. And I don't like that idea. What we've instead gotten is a schema that says there's compromises to be made and you may embarrass yourself and you may not feel good about every step of the way to get there. Um, but if you keep trying and you keep looking and you don't compromise on your morals, sometimes there's a, not a perfect way, but at least a decent way. And we didn't have to do what we did to Tommy to get there. And and it may not go well, but there's, there's at least more range for us to adjust. Um, 
especially if Isabel disputes it, which we know she would. We also have built a schema that tells us, don't just do what you think is best. Go and ask these people, talk to them, talk to Kim, exhaust every option, and, and you may find one that you've overlooked. So this is a huge win for Harry, despite the loss in morale. <laughs> we, we need to mag it up, or which one gives us, I don't know if it's mag or the other one, but we fucking did it. We fucking did it, and I feel so much better now. Okay. All right, Harry. You can now go confidently and, and submit the letter and go talk to Everett Claire and, and see what we can do with this. So that's what we're gonna do in the next episode. <laughs> if you've noticed me pacing around like this in the game, I, I should let you know, this is what I, th I'm a pacer. This is what I do in real life. In fact, like what I'm doing right now in the game, I pace around this apartment constantly. Something about walking around makes me have more mental clarity for whatever reason. Um, so I'm often walking around and thinking and talking aloud and just, this is just how I work things out. Uh, I, I walk like this all the time. And if I'm wearing my watch, it, it'll start saying, hey, you've been walking and here's how long you've been walking. Sometimes at the end of little self-therapy sessions, <laughs> I find I look at my watch and it will tell me I have walked like five miles in my apartment, just like I'm doing with Harry right now. So it's a bit neurotic, but look, it's it's what helps me. <laughs> um, it, it helps me avoid impulsive thinking and impulsive behaviors. Um, so it's just one of my, my little ways of coping. <laughs> oh, Harry, we did it. All right, next up. We're going to confront Evrart, this time feeling a little bit better about how we're going to do it. So that's what's coming up next. I'll see you then. <laughs>